I had this last glimpse of hope, and it was the day before the final exam, and I was gonna, I was gonna memorize my whole chemistry book. It was about that thing. But I sat down, I started going through those pages, and of course I fell asleep. And uh, I dreamed I was in an auditorium. I was the only one there. And there was a nebulous figure working out chemistry problems on the blackboard. And uh, when I awakened very early that morning, that dream was so vivid in my mind, I quickly picked up my textbook and looked up the stuff that I dreamed about. And the next day when I went to take the exam, you know, and I opened that test book and I looked at the first problem, and it was like I was in a twilight zone. I mean, I recognized it as one of the problems from my dream. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So needless to say, I aced the exam. And uh, I got a, a good mark in chemistry. Um, but, you know, I just said, Lord, you're never going to do that for me again. I'm going to learn how to study. I'm going to be guilty yeah. from this point on. And I, and I did change my ways. But when I got to medical school, I, I ran into another problem. You know, I did terribly on the first set of comprehensive examinations. And I was sent to see my counselor. He looked at my record. He says, you seem like a very intelligent young man. But there are a lot of things you could do outside of medicine. And he tried to convince me to drop out of medical school. He said, you're not cut out for medicine. And you're just going to torment yourself and everybody else. So why not just you know, get into another area. We'll help you get into another area of the university. And I think you'll be happier. Everybody else will be happier. It'll be much, much easier. Now, you know, I went back to my apartment. I was devastated. Can you imagine all your life from the time you were a little kid? You want to be a doctor. You finally get into medical school. And the person the university assigns to help you through tells you to drop on. And they had to go with me. And I just said, Lord, you've got to help me figure this out. Um, and I started thinking back, and I said, what kind of courses have you always struggled with? What kind of courses have you done very well? And I realized I, I struggled in courses where I listened to a lot of boring lectures. And I did very well in courses where I did a lot of reading. Now, there I was listening to six to eight hours worth of boring lectures every day. Basically, getting nothing out of them. So, I made an executive decision to skip the boring lectures and to spend that time reading. And I gotta tell you, the rest of medical school after that was a snap. It was just easy as pie. Because I had found what worked for me. Because everybody learns in different ways. Now, there are some people who get a great deal out of boring lectures. Uh, some people get a lot out of discussion groups. Some people get a lot out of repetition. But one of the keys to being academically successful is figuring out what it is that works for you. And also, figuring out what your gifts and talents are. And choosing a career that is likely to take advantage of your gifts and talents rather than sort of forcing yourself into something that perhaps doesn't work as well for you. You know, I remember uh, several years ago, we had a neurosurgical resident at Hopkins. Guy looked great on paper. Uh, you know, number one in his medical school class at Harvard. I mean, all the accolades. But in terms of being a surgeon, forget it. I mean, you wouldn't want this guy to tie your shoe. So, you know, he was very good with computers and reanimation and all these kinds of things. In fact, he helped me when I had to go to South Africa to, uh, to lead a team in an attempt to separate uh, Cranium Pegasus, uh, Siamese twins, uh, with all the 3D computer animation so that I could study the anatomy just as if they were sitting right there in front of me and could also use that to, to help with the operation from a remote uh, location. And I said, you know, you, you have an extreme talent. Very few people can do what you do 
with computers. You could be right on the forefront when it comes to virtual reality surgery. He didn't want to hear about it. He wanted to be a master neurosurgeon. That's the only thing he wanted to do. So he, he finished our program and he did a vascular neurosurgical fellowship out of which they kicked him and then went in there. And he bounced around from place to place and ended up in a tiny town out in the Midwest doing simple cases. Instead of going with his talent, in which he could have been by this time a world-renowned talent in that area, forging ahead with new information and benefiting all of mankind. My point being that every single person has special gifts and talents. And getting in contact with them makes a huge difference in terms of what happens in one's life. And also, it's so important to, to be an encourager. Now, I, I talked about you know, my counselor in medical school who told me to drop out. There's so many people who are like that. They can always find a hundred reasons why you can't do something. They never seem to have any solutions to how you can do something. And you know, if if our nation is to be successful going forward into the future, it's going to become vitally important that people stop being so negative about everything. You know, Republicans need to realize that Democrats can do some things right. Democrats need to realize that Republicans can do some things right. Nobody has a monopoly on right or wrong. Nobody has a monopoly on knowledge. Nobody has a monopoly on good ideals. Nobody has a monopoly on bad ideals. And in general, historically, when you look at people who are successful, you look at nations that are successful, societies that are successful. There are people who are able to look at the big picture, who don't sit around and pick at each other about little things that don't matter. 